Welcome to episode 132 of the Clarity Compressed podcast. My name is Paul J. Daly and I will be your host. And today we are talking about something that I'm starting to call kindergarten kind. We're making our way through the fog of life and clarity is understanding where we are on the map. You are here. <laughs> Let the good times roll. This is Clarity Compressed. So I saw a great post uh, on Instagram last week, and it was by somebody that I've really come to respect. His name is Bob Goff, B-O-B-G-O-F-F. Look him up. That's his handle, at Bob Goff. And it said this, love difficult people. You're one of them. And I just laughed when I saw it because I think election seasons are always full of so many escalated emotions and people that we would call difficult. And we're into this extreme level of venom and division. And it's always somehow justified by the venom that we have and, and anger and the frustration. We justify it by, you know, politicians, the media, uh, unfortunately, to one another. We justify this to one another. And in this particular season, you know, we're kind of in a post-COVID or, you know, the reaction of the COVID-19 whole era, right? We're already a little escalated. You know, we have racial tension, economic shakeups. And I feel like the level of insanity that is going on right now because of the election season on top of this has escalated this to what I would call like straight up face melter mode. I don't know if you know this, but, you know, heavy metal music, like the electric guitar solo face melter, just intense in your face, doesn't stop. And I feel like in society right now is just like one continuous face melter. And before we realize it, we're really, you know, we're starting to act in ways to one another that if we were in our right minds, not in face melter mode, we would never, ever, ever condone that type of treatment to one another. I mean, can you imagine a kindergarten class where we allowed or maybe even encouraged the children to treat each other and speak to one another and talk about one another in the ways that we often speak to, treat, and talk about one another as adults. I can't imagine that situation. You can't imagine that situation. If you can and if you do, it's all wrong. It is all wrong. So this, this concept of kindergarten kind came to mind as I was thinking through what to talk about this week because I was just getting so elevated and escalated by everything that's going on. So I want to talk about a few of the things that I've experienced. I made some notes because I want to make sure I get it right. These are a few things that I've experienced over the last, I don't know, the last months, but they seem to be escalating. First of all, you know, I'm in meaningful relationships with people on both sides of the political spectrum. And you likely are the same. And if you're not, then I would encourage you to look for some meaningful relationships on the other side of the aisle. But I have meaningful, deep relationships for people that are on the left, people that are on the right. You know, regardless of who they support, I believe that these different opposing views actually are founded in their desire to do what's best for people. You know, everybody has their version of the facts. Everybody, the one side has their facts, the other side has their facts. And just like everything in life, those facts are often interpreted through the filter of our life experiences, through the filter of our hurts, filter of what we've been taught growing up. However, that doesn't mean that those people who interpret the facts the other way have bad intentions for you or bad intentions for society, even though it might seem like, how could you possibly believe those facts? Both sides have them. Both sides, I believe, have a desire for things to be better. But sometimes our feelings, hurts, and emotions uh, simply overwrite our logic. And so I, that's been part of my experience. The second thing, people who are usually kind have become quite the opposite. These people justify their unkindness by some level of belief, often on either side of the political spectrum. And somehow that political belief now justifies the unkindness the lack of care, compassion, consideration that you give to other human beings. I've seen it a lot. Um, on the flip side, on the flip side of the unkindness, it actually ends up earning some kind of superficial applause or superficial credibility from the people that agree with you. If someone doesn't agree with you, all of a sudden that justifies how you can treat them poorly, yell at them, 
condemn them, call them names, right? And on the flip side, the people who agree with your political position actually applaud you. And the reality of the moment is that the people that applaud you, most of those people, they're not actually your friends. You don't actually have deep and meaningful relationship with them. They just happen to agree with what you're saying and are piling on you being venomous to someone else. When oftentimes the people you're being venomous to could actually be people that you have or had deep and meaningful relationship with. So I've seen that as well. The third thing that I've experienced is the more I uh, watch media pundits, politicians, kind of a growing majority in my mind, these seem to be people that are more excited to be important than they are to actually serve people. You see people changing their long displayed, their historical actions, and you see them changing those beliefs to fit the moment of what's popular right now, coming out with this very serious, serious stare into the camera. Because we're all COVID, right? So there's no face-to-face -face interaction. It's just serious stare into the camera and these pleas of sincerity and these pol politicians, media people, like, there. I just feel this, like, fake sincerity. And maybe that's never, I mean, maybe it's always been the case in politics. I don't know. I'm feeling an escalated version of it, but people are really excited to feel important. And I guess that doesn't, that does make sense in a social media world, but I'm experiencing it and I'm starting to see it. And maybe I'm just starting to like really just push back to it, you know, just internally and emotionally. I don't know if you're experiencing that as well. You know, finally, the fourth thing that I want to talk about is that I have had several extended conversations with people of different political views, people of different races, people of different upbringings, you know, that have kind of ended in tears, like not tears of like anger, but tears of brokenness. I'm really thankful. I mean, those conversations, a lot of times are a little bit uncomfortable to have, but when the breakdown comes, and even in spite of us being maybe of a different political view or a different race, I really start to see the hurt that's built up and this, I don't know, this coping mechanism or this just, just pain that it begins to overflow once you get through all the levels of political disagreement or different perspective on how you came through life. And those experiences have really brought me down in a level of compassion, but, you know, so I could be compassionate, but brought me down to be able to even have this podcast and say like, man, have we lost, have we forgotten that people are the mechanism of change and compassion. You know, I'm assuming I'm not alone in these experiences I just talked about. Like what I'm realizing and what I see, how I see people's perspective changing, people being very venomous in situations where they wouldn't be, having conversations with people with different beliefs or different upbringings, or different races, only to end in kind of a really healthy transparency and vulnerability. I'm assuming I'm not alone in these experiences. And I realized this, Governments don't change people. Policies don't change people. Political ideology don't change people. People can only decide to change themselves. And when they decide to change themselves and reach out, people are the catalyst to change other people. People decide to spew venom or to exhibit compassion, even kindness. People decide where they're going to draw the line where I can no longer have relationship with you. And so often we make decisions to separate from one another when we actually could just have a healthy debate or discussion about it. Instead, we divide. Real regular people, not politicians, not pundits, not political philosophies, but people. And so to bring this all the way around to the beginning of the concept of kindergarten kindness, I think that you and I can decide this every single day in the midst of all the pressure, in the midst of all the stress, so I'm just hoping I'm taking a fresh look at it. I hope you and this somehow encourages you to take a fresh look at. Are you even exhibiting the base level of kindergarten kindness? And I'm not just talking about in your face to face conversations, but in talking about other people, even in talking to people that believe the same as you in what you post on social media, what you push forward on social media. So keep supporting your political beliefs, whichever way you lean. That's the beauty of America. But above all else, I'm asking you to care for and love one another. Listen to one another. Don't make someone else the pincushion for all of your offenses and all the experience that you've had that hurt you. Don't make somebody else the pincushion where you just jam the pins in. You got hurt, so they deserve it. Instead, be a soft place for people who are hurting to land. Be a little more open-minded. Be a little more kind. We can be the people that decide to make the change because we have the clarity of what is actually going on and the clarity of the fact that we get to choose every week. 
I hope you go forward. I hope this week is a week with a little more kindness from all of us. I will talk to you next week. Till then, pursue clarity.